So he is still in Evin prison. Uh, he's on day nine of his hunger strike, but we have been encouraging him as a family, privately and now publicly, to, to end his strike. So it's, it's quite essential to us that he's in good health. Um, and hopefully he'll be back with us soon, so we want him to be well. Uh, he's, he feels quite forsaken and really deserted. Uh, he was, we've all always been assured by the FCDO that he was going to be included in, in the deal that they were working on, and so it came as quite as a shock to, to see the others come home. Uh, and back to their families and for him to have been left behind and not just left behind but also left in prison that was that was quite a hit I think emotionally. We thought he was going to be on the flight um, the understanding was that he was a part of the deal we we were hopeful that he'd be on that flight and then as we got closer to the day we we were told not really necessarily in an understanding way that he would actually be left behind but that he would be on an unrestricted furlough um, which actually didn't come to pass in the end and my mum we were told that my mum would have her travel ban lifted which also hasn't come to pass she's still on a travel ban and within Iran. What um, is your understanding of his health at the moment? I think he's probably struggling quite a great deal it's I mean after nine days of no food I can't imagine anyone would fare very well um, but he he also has had other health complications that I think have made it a little bit more challenging for him he has cancer doesn't he he, he did uh, and he had loads of complications off the heels of that that required more monitoring and ongoing treatment which which he hasn't had as consistently uh, and we have no way to to monitor it really from here he's um, a great dad and a wonderful husband and whenever we get a moment with him it's always tell me about what's going on with you how are you how's work how's your life he he's so keen to be focused on the positive things because I think he doesn't want us to worry and that I mean to be in that situation and to still be a pillar of strength for the rest of your family I think we've been very fortunate really to have someone so so mindful really and and just always thinking of the rest of us it's it's hard because you you know that he must be feeling so alone and there's not anything really we can do but i'm i'm here today because if this is the only thing i can do i want to do everything he he was in iran working on his wildlife conservation efforts he he's always been enthusiastic and, and interested in wildlife from the age of nine he had a National Geographic subscription um, but he he was semi-retired uh, in about 2009 and decided to devote more of his time to wildlife conservation so he he decided to to start that project and he was there just working with the animals in the wildlife and and I, he wasn't worried at all. He didn't express any concern. It came as a huge shock to all of us. So it was quite, quite difficult in, in the beginning because it, it felt like a huge mistake, a nightmare. You just didn't see it coming. And, and do you know the, the sort of circumstances around when he was uh, arrested and then eventually taken to jail? What, what actually happened? I, I actually don't know. Um, because I don't have direct communication with him. I, we get a tiny window every once in a while when my mum has long enough. She can put two phones on speakerphone next to each other and we can shout across to him. And it's usually for such a short period of time that we try to focus it on happy thoughts and I miss yous and I love yous and, and that we're well so that he doesn't have to worry and, and kind of hope for the best really and that we're doing what we can to get him back. Thank you.